thank you so much. And um, I feel honored to be back in Delhi. I feel honored to be back at the Ricina Dialogue. Um, and my visit here to India it should also be a sign of her dedication to the region. It should also prove, you know, many Europeans are accused you are only dealing with the Russian invasion in Ukraine or you are only concerned about your, your own region. And I can assure you that is not true. We know from the Russian invasion in Ukraine that it has global repercussions and implications also to the Indo-Pacific, also to India, be it on food prices, be it on energy, energy security. And therefore, I can assure you that we are aware that our own security, our own prosperity, it's intertwined with the security here in the region and with the stability. And my government has just recently, last summer, approved for the first time ever a China strategy a strategy that is dealing with our political, with our economic, with our security relations to the region. And it's not only dealing with our own bilateral relationship to the People's Republic of, of China, it is also dealing how to work with other countries here in the region, be it India, be it South Korea, be it Japan, be it Australia, New Zealand or Singapore in that regard. I uh, will return back to Germany with lots of insights, lots of information here from the Ricina dialogue. Uh, there had been great conversations, a good exchange, I believe that's necessary in these days. And I can assure you, I also knew, used my time here in Delhi for bilateral conversations with the Ministry of External Affairs of India, as well as with other countries. You know, we see that China is getting more and more assertive. It's um, sometimes even questioning the international rules-based order. Uh, we are convinced that every member of the United Nations, the permanent members of the Security Council especially, uh, owes a special responsibility, bears a special responsibility in protecting and preserving the one and only, the unique international rules-based order. And therefore, sovereignty and territorial integrity of countries is key. And what we can see with respect to Taiwan, what we can see with respect to the South China Sea, but also with respect to border disputes with India, for sure that's concerning because uh, we are convinced that any of such disputes need to be solved peacefully and in mutual consent. Given the situation in the Red Sea and the way the fragile situation that we are looking at, there are many countries who have come together to tackle that. How do you see India's role in Red Sea, per se, and when it comes to IMEX, since it's a threat, uh, the Red situation is also a threat on IMEX, how do you see that situation? So, with respect to the Red Sea, I'm sure that we share the same interests and the same goals. The freedom of navigation for us is key. It's key not only for economic interests. For sure, 8% of Germany's GDP goes through the Red Sea, and it's only the direct effect. If you take into account uh, the disruption of supply chains, for instance, it's even more. But it, it goes beyond economic interests. If ships, for instance, of the World Food Program of the United Nations cannot pass safely the Red Sea, we are in big trouble. And I'm aware that India has deployed ships to the region. And what I can tell you is that Germany is deploying a frigate right at that moment. Uh, it's already um, uh, in Cyprus and now heading towards the Suez Channel. Uh, I'll be returning uh, to Germany uh, this night because tomorrow the German parliament is in session. And we hope that it will get uh, give approval. We are, we are quite confident that it will give approval uh, for a mission of our armed forces in the Red Sea in protecting uh, the freedom of navigation. Manisha and India Rights Network. How do you look at uh, uh, collaboration with uh, between India and Germany in the Indo-Pacific region? This year, later this year, India will be hosting the Quad Summit. We're talking about rules-based order. How, do, how does all this fit together as an area of collaboration? So overall, the the collaboration between our two countries is growing and improving. Uh, last year, there had been, I believe, nine visits of uh, German ministers to India and also. Federal Chancellor Scholz was in India, and this year in uh, fall we will uh, have uh, intergovernmental consultations with India. 
And what I can assure you is that we are looking on, on, the, on, on the whole bandwidth, on the whole scope of bilateral cooperation. So be it on economics, we will have the Asia-Pacific Conference of the German industry in India. But it's also true for security policy. Germany will uh, deploy a frigate and a support ship to the Indian Pacific. And it will also, uh, later on this year, pay a visit to the port of Goa. Uh, Minister Shen, uh, you were here just two days before the second anniversary of the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, in between, we've had this uh, situation in West Asia, and a lot of people feel attention has been taken away from Ukraine. The war in Ukraine is grinding on. There doesn't seem to be a, a solution in sight. Uh, you were one of the countries that were affected the most in the initial stages. How do you look at this crisis and how do you see maybe the global south playing a role in efforts to find a solution, including India? So, you know, the, the Russian invasion in Ukraine, and you're totally right, we are close to the, unfortunately, to the second anniversary of it. It's a blatant violation of the international rules-based order, its implications and repercussions affect us all. We know that Germany and India, they might have a different voting behavior in the United Nations, but we share a common interest in the territorial integrity and sovereignty of countries. That's the protection of the international rules-based order. And I can assure you, you know, we are a staunch supporter of Ukraine, both when it comes to military support, as well when it comes to reconstruction. We believe reconstruction should be done in a way that it modernizes the country, that it uh, um, leads the country on its on its path inside the European Union. At the same time, we believe it needs the whole international community. It needs our global partners like India um, to find a way out of that war. Uh, President Zelensky has proposed a peace plan to end this war. That's the only only plan on the table right now. What Mr. Putin is proposal uh, proposing is is similar to, a, to an unconditional surrender of Ukraine, and this is something we cannot accept. Um, I'm aware that Switzerland plans to host a peace conference on discussing together with, with our countries in the Indo-Pacific, in Latin America, in Africa, uh, discussing ways out of that war. And I would highly appreciate if many countries, including India, could participate in that conference. One question of uh, sir, I, I'm Pradhan from Seaman News 18, sir. External Affairs Minister Jay Shankar was in, uh, in for a Munich uh, security conference. At that time, he gave an interview to a leading newspaper in Germany. And he was asked about India, uh, uh, is India pl uh, planning to buy weapons uh, from uh, Germany? To which he said uh, that Germ Germany uh, has always been cautious as far as security and defense uh, uh, thing is concerned. And also we know, uh, 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 sir, that uh, there have been a couple of reports regarding the submarine, talks over submarine that India wants to buy. Even Mr. Jayashankar also confirmed the talks are going on. I want your comments on that. And can we see, uh, you know, the situation where India can buy uh, weapons or whatever India needs from uh, Germany? First of all, I have to explain why, why, why I'm smiling because, you know, Asking a member of the government about uh, the permission of arms exports is always a very confidential issue and I cannot make public announcements about the details. What I can assure you is, and you're totally right, that traditionally Germany is very reluctant, very carefully in giving permissions regarding arms exports, but it's not directed against India as a country. It's a, it's a, it's a general approach really to check the details. At the same time, and these numbers are available in the public. You know, we have annual reports about the permissions that have been granted. I can tell you that the volume of the of the experts permissions between 20, I think 2018 and 2023 has gone up seven times in the volume. That also means we have no policy directed against India. For sure, we do a case by case checking. And it's not only about approval, it's also about the contract, it's about the deal itself, it's about the money, it's about the usual ordinary things. With respect to, to the submarines, we are in good consultations. Let me put it this way. Um, Mr. if I could ask at the same Munich security conference, you touched as Minister Jayashankar when asked about India continuing to increase its oil intake uh, from Russia, said Russia has never harmed our interests. Uh, I want to ask you what your reaction to 
that comment is, and whether you still think there is a purpose, you said you were discussing this mm -hmm. with the Ministry of External Affairs, you hope India will come to Switzerland to the conference. But do you think India's position is ever going to change on the Russia Ukraine war? You know, I'm not here uh, to teach and preach and to give advice. What I can tell you from my own humble experience is that we in Germany just a few years ago thought, okay, Russia had been a, a reliant supplier in fossil fuels, be it oil or gas, over the last decades, e even during the high times of the, of the Cold War. And that assumption for us as Germans had been proven wrong. Russia used its supply of fossil fuels, uh, fossil fuels against my country as a weapon, or you could say to, to impose pressure on us. So the lesson we had to learn, and it was a hard lesson because the, the, the energy prices were up high at the time, the lesson we had to learn was we need to diversify our supply chains. That's, that's, I believe the same approach India is taking with respect to China to be blunt. So the, the lesson to say don't be too dependent on one country alone is something I, I believe is well understood here. And um, that's, what I can, that's what I can say on Russia. And honestly, I'm convinced, and uh, therefore India has big opportunities that a good climate policy, having a transition to more and more renewables, being less dependent of any supplier of fossil fuels, that's also a good security policy because it raises your independence and your sovereignty. Sorry, this is not about the fossil fuels so much as the remarks by the external affairs minister that Russia has not harmed India's interests. There is no reason. You know, I, I'm, I'm aware of, of, of the history of, of the Indian and Russian relationship and at the same time I see that India is trying to diversify its international ties and uh, your colleague just asked before about arms exports, about cooperation and security policy and I see signals from Delhi that India has the interest to strengthen its cooperation with Germany, with the United States, with other countries and really, we read it like that. Any other question? No other questions? Thank you so much. Thank you very much.